Hi you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you are new here, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber or a returner, I think that's what we call them, like returners, like people that just like watch your channel and don't subscribe, it's fine. Um, we're just on chapter three of Daniel. Um, this, I've, I'm doing all of these in one sitting, at least right now for the chapters that I've done one through three. And this is just so good, I love the Bible. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start uh, chapter three, Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Um, feel free to go back and listen to chapter one and two, um, or yeah, that's just kind of where we're at. We're on chapter three. All right, King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 90 feet wide. That is a massive statue. Like, I remember when I was a kid, like going swimming and I would, and I, I, my mom had me do swimming lessons so I could, I could swim. And, um, like I remember going and like diving in like the 12 foot and being like, and like, it was like a big deal to touch the bottom, you know? And now like pools kind of freak me out. Like I can swim. I love going to the beach and stuff, but like pools kind of freak me out. Like, I don't know. It's like when you look in the water and like the lines, like the black tiles at the bottom, like, I don't know. That just weirds me out. I don't know if some, I think something's going to come and get me or what, but anyway, I just can't imagine a 90 foot tall, 90 foot wide statue. That is huge. Like I, I don't even know. Like that's just, it's just so obnoxious, you know? Um, all right, so King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 90 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the high officers, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the prov provincial, 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 words are hard, officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. So all these officials came and stood before the king or before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. So remind you in chapter two, he was just like, God is God, Lord of Lords. Like he can tell us the dream. He can reveal us the mysteries. And then he turns around and just starts worshiping himself. Like that experience did not change him. <laughs> He's just like, thank you, Daniel, for revealing my dream. Basically, thank you, God, for doing what I asked you to do. Thank you. And, and, and the reality is how many people do we know that are like that? Thank you, God, for letting me get married. I'm going to go do what I want to do. Thank you, God, for letting me have this baby. I'm going to go do what I want to do. Thank you, God, for giving me this job and this money. But thanks, I'm going to go do what I want to do. That's what that makes me think about. He, as much freaking out as he was doing, running around, threatening to kill everybody, he clearly did not change after that experience because he just set up this massive statue of himself and is now calling basically everyone in the town, everyone in the city, everyone in the province to come and look at it. Okay. Verse four, then a herald shouted out people of all races and nations and languages. Listen to the King's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Anyone who doesn't bow is going to die. That's that's the layman's terms of this, right? Which I think it's really interesting that... Um, I hate to keep bringing up this, like... Uh, I, I It's just interesting. I, and I didn't think about this reading this until just now. But I... Not that I want to keep bringing this up. But the whole renouncing sorority thing... Like, when you bow to another altar, like, that is a hard no for God. Like, that's n no. Like, no. And he has just made that very clear in scripture. Like, if you read the Bible, it's a no. You just don't do that. You just don't do that. So, um, yeah. Basically, they're like, anyone who doesn't bow to this statue, anyone who doesn't come and worship Nebuchadnezzar, whenever you guys hear these the, the sounds then you're going to be thrown into a furnace. You're going to die because you're not following our instructions, right? Verse seven. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or language, bow to the ground and worship the gold statue that the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So they're just like, like they're just doing what they've been told to do, right? Um, verse eight. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, long live the king. You issued a, a decree requiring all people to bow 
down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and pipes, and other musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you. Your majesty, they refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue that you've set up. So these people were just low-key saved <clears throat> by Daniel and his relationship with God being able to reveal Nebuchadnezzar that dream. Because if he didn't, Nebuchadnezzar was going to kill the same people that are now like snitching on Daniel and his friends, right? Because they are not bowing down to the statue. These people that are low-key jealous in a way of them because why would they be snitching on the people that saved their lives? Like, when you think about it, the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. How would they even know what the Jews are doing if they weren't monitoring them? Weird, okay? Um, and if you have spiritual ears, then you would understand everything I just said. Okay, great. So... Verse 13, then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought before, oh, excuse me, when they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or worship the gold statue I've set up? I'm so sorry, I'm tired. <sighs> Says verse 15, I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you'll be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? This man literally, this this is the same man that literally was just like, oh, God is God and he's the Lord of Lords and he is everything. And he was able to reveal to me my dream and oh, per, you know, glory to God, da, 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 rewarding Daniel. And the minute that these little minions come and tell them like, oh, well, they're not bowing down to what you said. They're not doing what you said. They're not bowing down to your statue. They don't respect you. They started putting all this stuff in his ear and it made him angry. So it made him angry because he wasn't feeling worshipped, if you will, right? So now he's like, hey, I don't know what y'all are doing, but I'm going to give y'all one more chance. And if y'all don't do what I'm asking you to do, like, I'm going to throw you in the fire. And there's not going to be a God that is going to be able to save you from that. That's basically what he's saying. The same man that just had God reveal his dream through Daniel to him as he was requesting. That is now what he's saying. There's no God that's going to be able to rescue you from my power. Okay. Okay, Dan. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. And even if he doesn't, oh, it's hitting me. It says, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up. Like, I'm sorry, but that's the kind of faith I want. Like, I have faith that my God will rescue me. And even if he doesn't, I'm not, I'm still not bowing down to the stuff that you got going on. Like, y'all. When you think about that, like, think about the person that you are. Like, think about the faith that you want to have. Like, these people are literally risking their lives for God, like, even if he, like, we don't have to, we don't owe you an explanation, like, we don't have to defend ourselves, like, you, if, if you throw us in the fire, like, we have faith that the God that we serve is able to rescue us, and if he doesn't, if it is my will, if it's God's will to die, and it's my turn to go, I'm still not serving your gods. Very clear. Verse 19, the blazing furnace. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. Y'all, I don't know if y'all have ever seen people manifest like when you know they got something going on in there that ain't aligning up with what you got going on with Jesus, you know? 
it does distort their face. Like you will see them look at you. Like sometimes they can't look at you in the eye. Sometimes like you'll just see their face just get mad. Um, so that's what I think about when I think about old Nebu just getting really upset. Like his, like ma majority of his, um, I don't want to say temper tantrums, but that's what they were. They resulted in anger. And we know that like, that's not a fruit of the spirit, right? So if it's not from God, then who's it from? Right? So he just got angry. He got angry enough to kill people, got angry enough to throw people in a fire because they weren't worshiping a statue. Um, so verse 19, again, it says, Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered, so basically he's like, y'all really taking me off and the fire was hot, but I'm about to make this like 10 times hotter. So where I, where I wanted y'all to burn maybe slowly, which is still terrible, y'all just going to go in there and die. Like y'all just going to be a crisp, like bye, just go, right? So verse 20, it says, then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. Y'all. Y'all. The people that tied these people up to throw them into the flames died. But the people that were thrown into the flames did not. That blows my mind. Verse 24. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped un, jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisor. Advi sorry. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did. They replied, look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around the, in the fire unharmed. And the fourth looks like a God. Y'all, like, I'm not about to go into this talking about myself. But when I can say that God is with y'all in the fire, there are songs like, he's with you in the fire and the flames. Don't, I don't know the song that I'm thinking about. I think it's by Maverick City. But y'all. He was with them in the fire. Not only were they not burnt, they were not, they were not bound anymore. They were not tied up anymore. They were freed in the fire because God was walking with them. And, and clearly people could see it. It doesn't matter how mad Nebuchadnezzar got. It doesn't matter how hot the fire was. It doesn't matter that the fire was supposed to be at maybe, I don't even know what degrees fire is at, but maybe it was supposed to be at 100 degrees and now it's at 700 degrees and they're still alive. They're just not only alive, they're alive and freed from the bondage that he tried to put them in. Know what I'm saying? So, then Nebuchadnezzar came, verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and he sh and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. He is still acknowledging God through this time, but he's not, like, he's getting it, but he's not getting it. He's not getting it. Like, God does not play boss, people. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire, <clears throat> verse 27. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their head was singed and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell like smoke. The Nebuchadnezzar said, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever race, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no God who can rescue like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. He's still not getting it. He's still not getting it. 
So he's seeing God do all of these things. He is seeing God do all of these miracles. He is literally a witness to all of these miracles. He is a witness to basically like these people, God helping these people defeat death. Like they should have been dead, right? Like they should have been burnt and like they should have been bound. Like, and they're free and walking in fire, right? And they don't even smell like smoke. They don't even look like what they've been through. I know y'all can agree with that. Like how many things do y'all go through and like y'all don't look like what y'all been through. And people are like, how are you like this still? How are you still kind? How are you still caring? How are you still a good person? Like how how do you still have your home? How do you still have your car? How like, You know what I mean? They don't, they don't, yeah. So after the Lord revealing his dream after God, like rescuing these people, he's acknowledging God, but he's acknowledging him, but he's not serving him. Right. So that is going to conclude chapter three. Um, and I guess I will see you guys next time.